a dazzling memoir of an African childhood. From Nobel Prize winning Nigerian novelist, playwright, and poet Wale Soyinka. Ake. The Years of Childhood. Gives us the story of Soyinka's boyhood. Before and during World War II. In a Yoruba village in western Nigeria. Called Ake. A relentlessly curious child who loved books and getting into trouble. Soyinka grew up on a parsonage compound. Raised by Christian parents and by a grandfather. Who introduced him to Yoruba spiritual traditions. His vivid evocation of the colorful sights, sounds, and aromas of the world that shaped him is both lyrically beautiful and laced with humor. And the sheer delight of a child's eye view. A classic of African autobiography. Aki is also a transcendently timeless portrait of the mysteries of childhood. Soyinka's childhood memoirs are so detailed and finely drawn that the question has to be asked how much is true memory? and how much owes itself to the adult writer's creativity. In writing a very impressionistic, sensually described narrative, Soyinka, it feels, is trying to capture the sense of infant discovery, of not entirely understanding your surroundings and the way the world works. There is confusion and mystery and wonder. All three combine to make Aki very difficult to read casually and at times, gorgeously magical, not at all magic realism. More childhood realism, vague, hazy, new. A slowly revealing picture of the world. That means that at times, RK is dense to the point of being a drag. But when realization shines through Soyinka creates moments of true beauty. There is also a sense of the joy of growing up and discovering things. Like the time he follows his sister to school secretly. When he is three years old. Or the day he follows a traveling band of musicians alone for miles. And ends up in a distant village. Young Wally. Comes across as the brightest of children. Naturally impudent and curious. Full of questions and determination not to be overshadowed. Or pushed into the background by the adults around him whom he names as he wishes after character treats, wild Christian, his mother, or professions, headmaster. One scene killing and cooking a snake on a neighboring farm. Brings together all those revelatory emotions. The joy of being part of the natural world. A little like Arthur Ransom evokes that childish sense of adventure. Which is so much more thrilling and innocent than the adult variety. Soyinka also describes the sadness of life with great beauty. The death of his sister on her first birthday makes use of that initial confusion to create a powerful sense of tragedy and shock when Wale sees her in her coffin and realizes what has happened. The second half of the book is a little clearer. Written as a young man going through the rites of growing up. A disturbing night with the priest during which his ankles and hands are ceremoniously bled and his time at school including his experiences of corporal punishment. He muses on the bizarre practices of the adult world. Such as why are white school children allowed pockets and black children not. Finally he narrates his time helping the town's women in their political activities. Playing the part of teacher for some illiterate girls and experiencing the riots and unrest in the town. When the women march on the king and government demanding an end to unfair taxation of women. A fascinating look at childhood elsewhere that is at times a trudging read. And at certain moments as bright and beautiful as a shaft of sunlight through a blanket of clouds. End of the review. Thank you.